Normalisasi hubungan Indonesia dengan Israel kembali muncul dalam pertemuan antara Menlu Retno dengan Menlu Amerika Serikat Anthony Blinken. Isu ini bukan kali pertama. Israel berkali-kali melakukan lobby dengan Indonesia. Kami mewawancarai ex-kepala Mossad untuk Asia Tenggara sekaligus wakil ketua kamar dagang Indonesia Israel. Benarkah Indonesia tidak memiliki hubungan dengan Israel? First of all, it's good to know that the Biden administration is following up on what the Trump administration tried to do. Uh, but uh, we still only have to see whether that will be have more success. What do you think? Is this normalization between the two states is possible to be happened? Uh, I think normalization is possible. I think for the time being, it's not likely. I think we have to find other venues to 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 go around it. As long as as long as we are not doing anything with the Palestinians, I think it will be difficult for the. Uh, for the uh, uh, politicians in Jakarta to go to full normalization. But there, there are alternatives, which I can talk about. What kind of alternatives? Well, for there is the Taiwan solution. You know, as you very well know, Indonesia does not have diplomatic relations with Taiwan because of China. And uh, uh, but nevertheless, there is a, a, a big office of economic interest for Taiwan in, in Jakarta. And there are very highly developed economic relations between Indonesia and Taiwan. Okay, so what the possibility is is to to go the same way, to, in, in, you know, to to have Indonesia realize that uh, the economic uh, interests are are very important. Uh, go for the Taiwan solution and leave the diplomatic relations behind on a, for for a better opportunity when Israel. We'll start doing something with the Palestinians. Okay, let's say, let's say that relationship between Indonesia and Israel are getting better. How that will impact um, the conflict resolution between Israel and Palestine? Um, actually, not very much right now. And and the the, the thing is that uh, my, my thought is always, you know, um, like. Erdogan in Turkey, he has with us six billion dollars of trade. When he says something, we have to listen. Okay, we don't have to do what he says, but we have to listen. So right now, the relationship between Israel and Indonesia is not very. It's two hundred million, three hundred million, five hundred million dollars. Not you know, there's not much at stake. Let's say tomorrow Indonesia breaks off every commercial relations. Not much is going to happen to Israel. Okay, if we exploit our commercial potential in both ways, and we get to six billion, ten billion dollars, okay, when Indonesia says something to Israel, we have to listen. Okay, if we have trade, which is you know there's a lot of trade, and a lot of Israeli companies are doing a lot of business in Indonesia, and then uh, uh, your president says, guys. Get get cracking with the Palestinians. You can't you can't you can't keep doing what you're doing. We listen, okay? It's very simple. So so uh, uh, you know one of our points is that uh, to to encourage Indonesia to engage with Israel uh, more in order to effect the conflict resolution, okay? In order to have an impact. Okay, I, I get I got your point. Uh, so the higher um, the commercial relationship between Indonesia and Israel, um, the higher position Indonesia will be um, in the conflict resolution between Israel and Palestine. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, so so that's 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 just the way things work, you know. If if there's a lot of common interest, a lot of common interest, you listen. Okay, if there's little little common interest, nobody cares. But if there's a lot of common interest and we do a lot of things together, we also get the, you know, we we think, you, we learn to think how you think. And you learn how to, to think how we think, which is good for both sides. So this is not the new issue, or the normalization lobby between Israel and Indonesia rose up since the President Suharto administration. Can you tell us more about that, about some normalization lobbies between the two states? 
I've been involved with Indonesia since 2000, uh, since the uh, Wahid administration. Uh, and at the time, uh, Guzdu was, uh, you know, he, he, he was very much in favor, but he got into political trouble over it. You know, I think when he gave his first speech to the NPR, he, he raised the possibility of having diplomatic relations and everybody screamed. So <laughs> the administration stepped back from that and started to do things quietly. Uh, and since then, really nothing much has happened on the diplomatic front. There were some attempts to do that uh, uh, in the, I think in the first Jacobi administration, there were, uh, I think Retno, uh, the, your foreign minister was about to visit uh, Ramallah and was asked to, there was, there was, there was a, uh, this wasn't played, played out very smartly by both sides. <laughs> okay. We wanted very much. You are not ready yet. And that's a, that's some kind of dissonance, which makes it difficult. And in 2000, uh, President Wahid met Prime Minister Shimon Peres. At that time, he was the Minister for Regional Cooperation. Can you tell us um, about that meeting? What were they talking about? Uh, they, take, they talked about uh, everything. <laughs> it was, you know, Shimon Peres, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, he can talk about a lot of things. And uh, uh, actually, it was an interesting uh, meeting of, of cultures because uh, uh, Guzdu is a very moderate, very, uh, very kind person, and he will not disturb anybody in the middle of speaking. So uh, Shimon Peres gave a review of the situation and everything. And uh, actually, well, there was not a lot of talk about developing relations at the time, but it was understood that that's part of the, uh, the effort of, of, you know, both sides will try to, to develop relations. Uh, uh, and uh, it, 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 it did help a little in the beginning. Unfortunately, Wahid only was in, in, in his position for... Uh, I think two years or a year and a half or something like that. Uh, it didn't, in the end, it didn't develop the way we had hoped. Okay, from that meeting, can you tell us how bad is uh, Shimon Peres and President Wahid um, likely to develop relationship between Indonesia and Israel? I think if, uh, if Gusdo would have remained in office, uh, things would have happened. Uh, I think things would have happened because uh, he, he gave a lot of support to the, his administration uh, to do that. Uh, unfortunately, he was, you know, he, he was, was an, an opposition, a man of the opposition by nature. He was also in the opposition to his own government, so that didn't help. Okay. What's your role in that meeting? I was the one who uh, arranged, I was the one who arranged it and I participated and I used the opportunity to ask for, uh, to ask Guzdu for a meeting with our prime minister at the UN uh, conference in uh, New York in 2000, mm -hmm. which Gusdur was very happy to uh, agree to. Uh, and, you know, so that was in my position as uh, head of station in the area, I, uh, I was there. How was Shimon Peres feeling about Indonesia at that time? Well, first of all, he is a personal friend of Gusdur from before. They know each other because Gusdur visited Israel when he was head of the, when he was uh, secretary general of the of the NU, uh, and he joined uh, uh, Paris uh, Center of Peace, and so uh, so they know each other well. And uh, uh, Shimon Peres was pre was uh, was curious, you know, he had never been to Indonesia, so he he asked uh, he asked a lot of questions. Uh, asked a lot of questions. He asked me, me a lot of questions because I had some exposure to Indonesia and he also had, uh, he asked uh, questions of the, uh, the Air Force personnel at the Halim Air Base. Uh, he was, you know, he's a curious person. Okay, since the fall of uh, President Wahid, how is the situation, the diplomatic situation between Indonesia and Israel? I think it's uh, consistently, it, uh, not, not much has changed. I, I think um, I think the Indonesian government is is uh, you know is on one side it's interested, but it's not that interested, and on the other side it's uh, apprehensive because it knows that the Indonesian public is not supporting right now uh, uh, you know a normalization of the relationship. 
So it's always walking a fine line. And I think that's uh, one thing Indonesians are good at, you know, to, to walk a fine line. <laughs> yeah. So not, not, I, I, there has been very little difference between the, the, uh, the administration of Megawati and the administration of uh, SPE. And uh, now Jokowi, it's, it's, it's fairly consistent. Okay, and um, why Israel want to have a relationship with Indonesia? That's very, first of all, for, for several reasons. First of all, uh, it's a sh very large market, okay? And there's a good complementing between the two economies. A lot of the things that we are very good at is the, the things that Indonesia needs, okay? So, so that, that's, that's one reason. Uh, there's political reasons because Indonesia is a, a, a large, the largest Muslim country in the world. And uh, there's a lot of inter and it's, it's a very moderate Islam. The political Islam in Indonesia is something that, you know, we, we should only be so lucky if, if, the, uh, the, if, if Islam in, in our neighborhood would be like it is in Indonesia. So there's, there's a lot. Uh, it also, it's, it's, it's good for, uh, for, for Israel to be exposed to a moderate Islam, moderate Islam and a moderate Muslim country. Okay, so um, there's, there's a lot of reasons why Israel has interest. Uh, and, uh, and also there's uh, not inconsiderate, also not to forget also that uh, uh, through Indonesia, Israel can get to other uh, Muslim countries. Uh, commercially.